Deponia, the complete journey. Now, I got this as a freebie off Epic Games. And I had never played it before, but when I read over it, it looked very interesting. Now, this complete journey, it actually consists of three games. The first three games in the Deponia series of games. Deponia, which was released in uh, October of 2012 in well, Worldwide. Chaos on Deponia, which got worldwide release in November of 2012. And Goodbye Deponia, which was released in October of 2013. It's actually quite amazing. These games make a very complete story. And follows a very good description of an anti-hero. That being Rufus. Now, as it starts, Rufus is trying to leave Deponia. He wants to go to Elysium. Now, if you don't to simplify that matter, Deponia is a planet that is pretty much covered by junk. And whose native life form, animal-wise, and possibly for food, is the platypus. They have various forms of platypus, and these buggers can even fly. And, well, let's face it, there's so many different types in, as you see through the series. And it's something else. In fact, if you could find clean water on Deponia, you got a benefit. Especially if you're nowhere near a sea or anything like that. But Rufus wants to leave Deponia. He wants to go to Elysium. That's where the elite have gone. And it's not revealed until you get further into the series the truth about Elysium. But your game opens, well, actually each of the three parts opens with a section of a tutorial, you know, getting you used to the point and click controls, but uh, the first one actually begins with Rufus on his latest attempt to leave Deponia. And his plan is to actually attach to a passing Organon cruiser and then, and then, yeah, pardon the phone there. Um, once you leave Elysium, he well, once you get to the Organon, you're supposed to make your way to Elysium from there. However, when he gets up there, he actually stumbles across Goal, a woman from Elysium, sort of captures his heart. And there is a learn a plan of blowing up Deponia. But since she knows there's life on Deponia, obviously she's not going to give the heads and he's not going to give an okay on it. She's also not the one who was initially going to give the okay because uh, she was there with her fiancé, a gentleman named Cletus. Well, Rufus ends up saving Goal. From the Organons who are trying to stop her from revealing this. Of course, in his own bungling way, it ends up knocking her down to Elysium, with putting her into a bit of a coma. Or not to Elysium, to Debonia. So now, she must, well, he must first find a way to prove that he is the one who found her. 
because because she is in a coma, everybody is trying to earn the right to one take care of her and to you know she lives with them. To which Rufus has to first wake her up to get her to at least recognize him, only to find out that her and then only to find out that her memory is not in the best of shape. So now he has to get her and in this process she also learns that uh, he also learns that someone else is looking for her, Cletus. And he can help Rufus get her memory back in order. So, of course, he has to, you know, get her, then get out of uh, Kuvat. I think that's the name of the place that he lives in with his former girlfriend, Tony. And when it comes to Tony, it's sort of like uh, you, you sort of understand why she uh, left him or why she doesn't want anything to do with him. But has to because he's living with her still. But she's also a bit of a mean bitch too. So, Well, once he gets and rescues Goal from Kuvat, just as the Organons appear, uh, he has to get her to all the way to the lower ascension station get her mind back to her, so to speak. And then you also find out that Cletus is entirely in league with the Organons. Also that Cletus looks very much like uh, like Rufus. Like they're twins. Well, Eventually, you find out that uh, the Organons seem to, after you uh, reveal Cletus's duplicitous nature, you get the Organons, you know, willing to help you f continue the ruse of being Cletus and send you back up to the station with Goal, or send you up to the to the ship to Goal with Goal to Elysium. But Rufus, well, he wants to leave Deponia. He doesn't want to see anything happen to the people of Deponia. And he's actually honest with Gull, which, uh, well, that upsets her. And then we have everything get uh, turned on its head. And of course, uh, because now he comes back and Rufus, or Cletus then again shows things and turns the tables on him, Rufus has to again escape the Organons. And he's now being helped by a gentleman he met in that part named Doc, who is very skilled at inventing and all other sorts of things. <laughs> and a trawler named Bozo. And Rufus kind of, you know, Rufus likes these people. He does like them. I mean, he's still full of himself, but he actually find, you know, likes these individuals. So now he's helping them get Rufus, I mean, he has an air plan to launch himself to the hot, to the life the lifeboat or that they're using, which in turn also destroys it. We get Goal away from Cletus, only to find out now that her memory cartridge is damaged, seriously damaged. 
And so uh, Rufus, in a quest to get the right item, uh, he manages to screw it up. But now you have a way to split, switch between three different personalities for goal. But in order to get things to move on and sort of re-get them together, uh, he has to talk with each part and woo each part, involving various things. Of course, in this section, we also run into we run into Rufus's father, who is. Oh, let's face it. If there's any reason of why, any contributing reason to why Rufus is the way he is, Seagull, his father, his quote father, is a definite reason. This man is self-important, willing to tra to turn on anyone, and use anything to further his own goals. And so, he is, quote, wooing first the sophisticated lady goal, which Rufus manages to pull a surprise on by, uh, you know, hijacking his uh, little helping hand. He then moves, uh, he must woo baby goal by joining the resistance. And then he has to sort of sport his way to showing Sporty Gold that, you know, impressing her. All this time, you're also going around more of uh, the overworld of Deponia, learning about things, and eventually proving... That everything is, uh, you know, that you're do trying to do the right thing. In fact, at one point, however, we get to the point that we meet. We fur the resistance gets furthered, but uh, now we have uh, Lady Gull willing to turn on everybody. Of course, we do that. We stop, you know, we do convince her not to do it by showing her Cleus's true colors. We also happen to have uh, Donna, who is, the le who is definitely not mentally sane and in charge of the unorganized crime. So once we do all that, we move on to the next part of our little journey. You know, successfully, you know, getting, ba you know, getting Donna, uh, getting Lady Goal out. And sticking Cletus with, uh, well, sticking Cletus with Donna, Lady Goal's with us. And so now we have to get that straightened out. But of course, now we have more difficulties. Now, of course, they're trying to beat the Organons up before Cletus can figure things out and get moving. And that's where we come into the third part, because Rufus, in actually what's a de what was kind of clever, you know, tries to get onto the Organon craft rail that's all around Deponia. And also attacks and fails. Well, uh, they end up getting hooked to an Organon vehicle. That he and go go over to dislodge it. Uh, this whole escapade leads to a bit of an embarrassing situation for late for Goal, but she also shows up as um, she actually enjoyed the whole escapade. We also meet Rufus's only fan on Deponia. Barry. A lot of people look up to him. 
and now Rufus must make his way. They must make their way to the Organon High Boat so that they can sneak over, tell them about what's actually going on on Elysium so that they cannot further their plan. You see, the plan is to de blow up Deponia. This is where it gets known towards the tail end of part two and the beginning of part three. They want to blow up Deponia so that Elysium, which is actually a spacecraft, can make its journey to Utopia. You see, the Elysiums, the people up in Elysium, they wanted for so long to go someplace nice and beautiful that their plan was they left Deponia. But there was still a lot to do. And over generations, they forgot that there was actually life on Deponia. So now that they're ready to do it, they need to make sure, of course, that there's no life on Deponia because there's some people who would believe that there is life down there. And of course, it's, there is life down there. So we move forward. Now, of course, Rufus is now pretending to be Cletus. And, of course, you know, in, in a mistake on Rufus's part, which even Gull says, you can tell me when you do something dumb. We're in this together. So now they have to, quote, find his, you know, find security footage because it's, there's always security footage everywhere. He needs to find a computer center. They must uh, clear out the memory file of Ru the video footage of what Rufus did dumb, which ultimately fails. They get caught by the chief of the Organons, Argus, who... As we then find out that Gold really does love Rufus, and uh, we're trying to avoid getting caught by Rufus, or get caught, Rufus goes into a, quote, uh, truth droid and all that, or something like that, interrogation droid, and causes it to malfunction, which ultimately almost kills Goal. You believe Gold's dead, but she's still alive. You find this out later. And we also learn at that time that Argus looks like Rufus as well. And when the robot's dumped, as well as what looks like Goal, which I'm not, I'll explain that in a little while, uh, we end up getting into a part of the world. We end up meeting an individual named Hermes, who is very old. Hermes is the one who is responsible for creating the Organons. And this eventually came from three prototype clones that were all identical, except at birth, uh, each one had a different hair color. these clones eventually got separated. One is Rufus, who has apparently made his way home. The second is Cletus, who somehow got to Elysium. And the last is Argus. And all the Organons are basically based off the Cletus clone, the, the Argus clone. So we have three clones who, while they had flaws, they could grow. And so now Rufus is trying a last-ditch effort to, one, break the cycle, and in turn creates three clones of him, two clones of himself. To do it, both he and Hermes, his last incarnation, must wipe themselves out. 
So Hermes is no longer in the picture, but now we have three Rufuses. Rufi, whatever you want to call them. And they are running around trying to establish three tasks. One, reclaim a, a young and now babyfied goal. Two, get aboard the Organon boat. Finding out that the Organons are try going to use this to invade Elysium at the uh, behest at the under the plan of Arg of Argus. And we also find Cletus is very much alive. He's been held prisoner. And finally, because Argus is going to pose as Cletus, and finally, the other one must get word to the resistance. Now, as you're doing all this, you will find ways to interact with each of the Rufuses being able to transfer in stuff between them. And this is where we come into some very questionable things that Rufus is, does. Again, somewhat showing his lack of caring in some ways, and two, inadvertently you know, putting people in a worse situation, all because he's trying to do what's right in the end. And he does, and eventually he gets all the way, you know, when they get to, finally get into the Organon head, uh, into the uh, resistance, we find Seagull still very much alive. I mean, you know, in, chap in game two, you do see him get shot by the Organons. And of course, he is belittling. He has taken charge of the resistance, who has very much got them convinced that nothing's going to happen, or, you know, they've got to be gung ho and all that. Things are really going downhill. Once, of course, Goal gets. And of course, we find Goal has survived up there, and uh, she and the Rufus up there are making their way down now to uh, Deponia. We then see, of course, uh, the Rufus with the baby Goal, and the baby Goal, and they finally get her to age up, is um, Donna. Like, how the hell? Hermes! Hermes had the wrong one, but somehow got her, probably because of whatever memories was in her at the time. So, in a last-ditch effort, everybody who's there of the Resistance and the people who are, you know, now, mentally whole bozo because he was really broken down after all that, and then they reinvigorated uh, Doc in our final chapter. They learned, what we need is a harebrained scheme. And let's face it, Rufus, that's your specialty. A harebrained scheme, a long shot. Because let's face it, all his attempts to, to leave Deponia have been long shot crazy ass schemes to which they get up there Rufus fools the Organons in almost a comedic fashion they get to the contr high controller which is actually Gold's father and he's willing to blow up the planet basically because you know he wants what's best for his daughter as a father, I can understand some of that. A 
Of course, finding out that she went down there against his wishes, uh, she basically, uh, this changes everything. So now they have to save the boat, even if it's going to crash. Rufus, Argus, and Cletus go to stop things. Stop the bombs from going off which they stop the signal, sends the signal. They stop everything else. But now we have three people stuck. None of them can move or else the propeller will kill the other two. But the propeller needs to go so everybody can be saved. In the end, what we have is that Rufus has matured. Rufus has grown. Rufus self-sacrifices himself. Apparently falling to his death. I believe Argus is dead. And Cletus is now pretending to be Rufus. I mean, the whole plan for Cletus or Argus was to pretend to be Rufus by acting as Rufus had. But the thing was, Rufus, uh, he had matured. He even says, because the real Rufus would never do this, and then let's go. Allowing them to, of course, rescue the cap, you know, the one that was captive. Or that was stuck. Thus ending the adventure of Deponia, the complete journey. And goodbye, Deponia. This is... This was a fun series of games. There were some morally questionable things. Which I do not condone. But Rufus had to do what he had to do for literally the greater good. The survival of Deponia. The survival of the people. And in turn, even helping keep the people on Elysium safe from a possible overthrow. And of course, I mean, let's face it, the Organons are all in some way his brothers. This was a very interesting set of games. Uh, he's, uh, Rufus is a great example of an anti-hero. Which makes the morally ambiguous to difficult, you know, choices that don't necessarily seem right in the long run, or don't seem right at the moment, but are right in the long run. He's a perfect example, and he does show maturity. I honestly recommend this. I mean, some of it is crazy, some of it you can actually figure out. Any of the game-based puzzles, you can actually skip. I didn't. I was using walkthroughs and figuring some of them out on my own. But it's definitely a game I would recommend for everybody to play. And that's all I'm going to say about The Pony of the Complete Journey for right now. I hope you'll enjoy my retrospective on it. And uh, until next time, I wish you all to take care and have fun. Bye, all.